Ladies and gentlemen, Sidestrafe back in Star Wars The Old Republic. And it has indeed been a while, but I think it's about time we dust off that old assault cannon and finish off Makeb. So today for your viewing pleasure, I've got some live stream highlights. Uh, I think I went on for about four hours or so. Some of that was of course spent just perusing the Galactic Trade Network for new toys, but uh, beyond that, I did manage to get some gameplay in, as you can see here. Letting these bad boys have it with big guns. Always a good time. I am, of course, quite rusty. I think it's been about a year since I last played this game. If we go by my channel content, uh, obviously I never got to my last level. It was just one of those things where I had gotten burnt out by the time I could get there. I wasn't really too fond of this planet, if I'm to be completely honest. Uh, felt a bit repetitive over time. But uh, special thanks to my livestream viewers for putting up with my shenanigans and my noobishness. Uh, I really appreciate the fact that we had some uh, knowledgeable players on hand and uh, they decided to give me some tips and tricks. But uh, you'll see me mess up quite a few times here, maybe not go through any correct rotations or anything, but I had a lot of fun and that's what playing video games to me is all about. Uh, I'm not a metagamer, I'm not going to be perfect, I don't have all my hotkeys bound, I'm going to use the mouse to click on buttons sometimes. But it doesn't really matter. It's all about just playing the game your way and making sure that you have the best time you can. And uh, thankfully, I had a lot of people in the live stream that were completely okay with that. Now, I'm sure some of you are wondering why I've decided to jump back in this game. Really, it's just the fact that I want to play an MMO again, and I want that MMO to be sci-fi. And, well, I love Star Wars, so this makes sense. I never really thought that it was a bad game. I got hundreds of hours out of it, and uh, the cooperative gameplay was fantastic. The chapters got stale a little later on for my trooper at least, but uh, all in all it just has so much to offer that you can't go wrong, especially considering the price that you pay for single player RPGs that are not even 10 hours long. Yes, the gameplay in many respects is typical. People are always going to call it Space WoW, but at the end of the day, it works. It's fine. People are used to this kind of gameplay. I would prefer a Twitch combat system, but this is what we have, and I still enjoyed it. It's one of those things where you have to let the immersion take you. You have to get involved with the storylines and the characters, and just have fun with your friends, and have a good time making light and dark side choices. Perhaps I enjoyed it just because I'm a big Star Wars fan. Well, if that's the case, then so be it. I don't think my satisfaction senses know the difference. Get back. Stay with the hostages. You can slip away. It's over. Don't you see that? You can't even move. Someone please help him! This man held you hostage for days. Now you're worried he's going to die? I'm not a hostage, I'm his wife. I know what he did was wrong, but he was just trying to save us. No one got hurt, see? What about the protectors? They aren't soldiers, those were civilians he killed. He's with the Regulators. They betrayed everyone on Makeb. The Regulators are gone. We just want out. My husband was trying to get seats on the Ark for his family. That's all any of his men wanted. You would have done the same. All of these people want to escape Makeb alive. They haven't put a gun to anyone's head to get there. They had a choice! Our men didn't! You kill the rest of my men. I'll die with them. But my family wasn't in on the plan. No! We won't leave you behind! Please let him go with us! He'll surrender to the Republic, I swear it! Ah yes, decision making time, and uh, this was a unique experience for me because uh, this was the first time I had a few hundred people watching me make my choice, so you can imagine some of the discussion held within the chat made for interesting viewing. You and your husband can get on the Ark, but he'll have to answer for what he's done. A ticket to jail, huh? Sure you want to be a criminal's wife? Better than being his widow. Thank you. It's all right, everyone. Just stay where you are. We'll get to head count and check your vitals. We'll get word to Tad and Samson. Let them know the standoff has ended. You did the right thing with Captain Nikos. We appreciate it. 
All right, so one quest chain down and on to the next. And uh, I wanted to discuss a article I had found some time ago. It is uh, top subscription-based MMO titles, and this was for 2013 uh, worldwide statistics. But uh, one through five are the following. World of Warcraft, East and West, Lineage 1, Terra Online. Number four is Star Wars The Old Republic, and then number five is Lord of the Rings Online. So again, this is top subscription based MMOs. We all know that Star Wars The Old Republic is now free to play, but yes, you can of course optionally subscribe to have access to all of the game's content. So what does that say about this game? Well, it's actually doing pretty well. I know a lot of people thought that it was on its way out, but it's just another example of free to play saving a title. Let's look back at Lord of the Rings Online, which was not doing so well. Free to play totally brought it back from the dead. It's doing fine. And again, on that list, considering how old that game is for it to be number five in subscription based MMOs in 2013, that's not bad. Now with Star Wars at number four, it's also doing pretty well. I don't have updated statistics, but again, 2013 wasn't that long ago. I would assume that the numbers are somewhere around the same. And with the resurgence of Star Wars, with the new episode coming out in 2015, I think that anything Star Wars is going to get even more popularity and notice. In any case, I'm not here to sell you on the game. I'm pretty sure most people know about this title and how it works. It's not as bad as it once was, though, in regards to its free-to-play restrictions. It was much worse at one point, but uh, there was uh, quite the community outcry, and that has since changed. I will tell you that you can enjoy quite a bit for free if you want to get through a couple of uh, chapters. I think you're limited to two characters on a free-to-play account. You can unlock more character slots individually if you so choose without subscribing. This game does feature what they call a cartel market where you can use real money to buy uh, cartel coins and use those coins to unlock individual components. So let's say you want to unlock a character slot. You can do that without subscribing. You want to unlock more bank space or options to show titles or surnames or uh, color unification. All of those things can be unlocked separately. So in theory, you could actually kind of unlock the bits and pieces that you want from the game and not subscribe, but you are going to be paying a little bit more up front. Now, in my case, I have decided to resubscribe at least for a month to check things out. And uh, it's one of those things where I think that anybody that invests uh, quite a bit of time into an MMO, they're going to want to subscribe just to have everything unlocked. It's more of a convenience thing. Uh, also, let's face it, I'm sure they've strategically locked things in certain areas to make you want to subscribe. That's how free-to-plays make money. But uh, I will promise you that if you do make a character or two, that you can at least get through a couple of the chapters, and you'll probably get quite a few hours out of it without having to spend a dime. And if you really want to get the most out of your Star Wars experience, get a couple of friends together. Everybody play a different class, group up, and check out each other's storylines. It's a really unique experience, and I don't think I've ever seen a game do it like Star Wars does. I was able to play most of this game with uh, my friend Rurikon, and he was a smuggler. I was, of course, a trooper, and we would group up and go through each other's uh, storylines. I'd get to see his uh, dialogue choices and cutscenes, and it was fantastic, and he would see mine as well. I suppose a downside to that would be if you are the type of person that likes to roll alts and you're playing with somebody who is a character you're going to eventually create, then that will, in a way, spoil... Uh, the story for you, but uh, you could of course play again and make different decisions to change things up a bit. However, given the opportunity, I don't think I would pass up a cooperative experience. It's just a lot of fun. It's something that I had never experienced before, and uh, I don't regret uh, a minute spent with other people playing this game and checking out their storylines. Plus, I really don't have that many alts anyway. So enough about the story elements. You know that's pretty much what makes up the bulk of this game. But what else have they added that would perhaps make this game worth your while? I think for that we have to head out into space. Yep, 
you guessed it, they added space combat that's not on rails. So you can get yourself a somewhat War Thunder World of Warplanes experience in Star Wars The Old Republic. Now, okay, maybe it's not as great as what Star Wars Galaxies had. What is as good as Star Wars Galaxies? I know, I've heard it a billion times, but you have to admit that it's pretty fracking cool that this game exists within an MMO. The fact that there's a game within a game, I mean, that's, I think, pretty neat. And it looks good, it feels good, it sounds good, it actually works, except for the fact that I, well, have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. But uh, I'm pretty sure that most of you are used to that by now. So while my knowledge is limited in regards to this game mode, I will tell you that there are some similarities to War Thunder Arcade in that you can pick a variety of ships to bring into a battle. Once you lose one, you go to the next. In this example, I only have two at my disposal, neither of which seem to last very long, but that's mostly my fault. I do believe that you can train crew and upgrade your ships. You can also change a lot of the cosmetics, which of course you can buy paint schemes from the cartel market, a uh, very popular thing for people to do. Uh, on top of that, you've got the UI, which features health and shields at the lower left-hand corner, abilities per ship at the bottom there, uh, map, and then up top right, you've got targeting, center, top, you have uh, objective status. Uh, on top of that, there are different ships, so you've got fighters and bombers and things like that for different roles. Here you can see we're flying over an objective. You need to fly around it slowly to capture it, uh, and that will uh, determine your ability to perhaps win the overall match, unless you can get just far more eliminations. But uh, in this case, I'm trying to track down one of these bandits, but it's just not happening, and I'm taking some damage, you can see, by the lower left-hand corner display. Uh, just trying to stay on these guys, figure out my maximum range. I think when you target them properly, you get a lead indicator. And there doesn't seem to be collisions, at least I didn't see any. And Mayday, Mayday, bad news, I think we got a missile lock on us as well. Yes, there are missiles. Flipping around here with one of my abilities. I seem to be on fire, not a good thing, don't think I will last. Nope, pretty explosion though. So clearly this does get pretty hectic, uh, especially if you have no idea what you're doing. But uh, if you're looking for some level of realism in space, you're not going to find it here. Obviously, this is a Star Wars game. You really shouldn't come in here with that expectation. It's not going to be Elite Dangerous or Star Citizen, but it is a nice addition to it. And I actually had quite a bit of fun. I think that it's cool that this is here, and it's something that they had been talking about for some time. Uh, people were enjoying the whole on rails experience, which I think still is in the game, but really, I couldn't get into it, and I think that this is far more enjoyable. Back in action, and in my final ship, I'll take this time to mention the fact that uh, there are more maps. I had seen one that had some really nice rock spires coming up off of a planet. Uh, or maybe they were floating, I don't remember, but anyways, they were nice. And uh, as you can see, this area looks really nice as well. Uh, you can crash into objects, even though it seems like you can't crash into other ships. I don't know how I would know that. I think I read it somewhere. Yeah, that's the excuse I'll go with. And <laughs> it was an instant kill uh, the last time I read about it. Um, so I don't know if different ships can survive impacts longer or if other ships have better shields and things like that but uh, as you can see here that's the end of my flight time but uh, I'm impressed and I'm sure there's a whole forum filled with people complaining about balance and stuff but uh, as a new blit uh, who really probably won't take this mode too seriously I think it's pretty cool especially since it's part of an MMO uh, we haven't seen an MMO do this in a long time. I know some of you have fond memories of Galaxy's space component, but hey, doesn't exist. This does, and I think it's a neat feature. But wait, there's more! The Old Republic has added their Strongholds system, which is basically player housing. You can uh, create a stronghold on a variety of planets, more than one planet if you want and uh, fully decorate the interior with crafted furniture and things off of the cartel market. On top of that, you can acquire a guild flagship, if your guild is large enough and rich enough, I'm assuming. And this flagship can be moved throughout space and docked above certain planets, thereby providing special buffs and support to your guild members actually on the planet. There's also special events for planetary control, which I believe uh, provides a bunch of other benefits and perks. 
I don't know too much beyond that, but I will have some links in the description below if you want to read more about it and perhaps even check out the official trailer. And last but not least, uh, patch 3.0, I believe, introduces some new Darth Revan content, so that should be interesting for you end gamers out there. I believe that that is sometime in October, but uh, in any case, I think that everything I've shown you today or discussed proves that this game is actually doing pretty well. I mean, I'm pretty sure that if you're failing, the last thing you want to do is add a detailed player housing system. But uh, anyways, ladies and gentlemen, make sure to stay tuned for a whole lot more here on the YouTube channel as well as on Twitch.tv. Thank you all so very much for joining me. I will definitely see you on the next one.